I fell into journalism and to radio. I was doing case management, a lot of door-to-door -door social work for a community mental health center. And frankly, I was just burning out. My mother introduced me to public radio. I just loved it. I had this cockamamie idea that I talked to people. I could talk on the radio. And I started here as a fill-in intern volunteer slash reporter. I was terrible. But you could give me a tiny little piece and I could make it in the hour. So I, I learned the hard way, I guess, or maybe the right way about what my skills were on the radio, but it was not being a reporter. Radio Time started back in 1987 when we had um, interns. I would give them bus money. They would get on the bus, go to the Free Library of Philadelphia, go down into the basement and look through the files to get copies of news articles that then they would hop on the bus, come back and give to me. Of course, now you can put an intern in front of a computer. Boom, there's your, there's your research. Um, I had done some interviews for Fresh Air, Voices in the Family. I started that show and had done some interviews there. So I knew a little bit about that. In the beginning, it was, it was scary. But I remember the first interview I ever did and I got through it, not sure it was particularly good. And then I had the realization is, I have to do this tomorrow. And then I have to do it again the next day. How to pace yourself, how to pick topics, how to figure out who the right guests, how to deal with controversial issues. To be honest with you, I really learned on the job. And I think I had a very forgiving audience and uh, some very forgiving bosses as well. Many programs these days are more edited and packaged and put together. And when you're live, anything can happen. And it does. But on the other hand, you can have those really magic moments that you didn't anticipate and there it is, and you get to talk about it or play with it, so I like that. Most days, it's an hour is spent talking about something, and I think in today's soundbitey world, that's pretty unusual. Um, and I like to think the, the quality and depth of conversation sets us apart. I kind of joke that I, I do the homework now I didn't do in high school. There's a little bit of truth to that. I wasn't the greatest learner, um, and I have become, I think, a very good learner. I wouldn't do it if I didn't still love it. But I, when I get up in the morning at 5.30 uh, to get in here bright and early, I'm excited to start the day and see what happens. I always prepare an interview, always knowing that that may not work out, and maybe the better interview is the one you didn't prepare for, and that's the one you should do. When there's a good interview, it's just, it is the best feeling. It's just the best feeling, and mostly because that person was real and authentic, and they, they are on a book tour, but they were willing to, to be a real person on the show. Because oftentimes what they tell you is the thing you didn't anticipate, and it's really the heart of the interview. How much pleasure I get out of that.